didn't even know they were choking me with the sword. Karamat! I did not even know they were sticking sword in me. Can you imagine how much love, protection for this sunnah? Rabbul Alameen first gave him water. Secondly, he doesn't he faints with the lashes, but he doesn't even know they're stuck in the sword in him. And they continued beating Ahmad and Muhammad Rahimahullah. They continued beating him for 28 months. 28 months, subhanAllah. Then they released him after 28 months. They released him after 28 months and then this Mu'tasim guy died. Well, a lot of people is dying in this book. His wife died, his two children died, his other wife died, his Ma'mum or Rashid died, his Al Ma'mum died, Al Mu'tasim died. Now, this other guy by the name of Wathik took over. So now he was freed by Mu'tasim after 28 months and this Wasim guy, this Wathik guy wanted to punish him again. So this Wathik guy goes, you know what, I don't think flagging and lashing and whips is going to do anything much to this Ahmad guy. You know what, I need to do something better than this. <coughs> so, because this Wathak guy realized if Ahmad was not freed from 29, 28 months of torture and sufferings and sticking the souls in him and everything, it's like the people loving him, Ahmad ibn Hanbal. They're loving him more, he became more, so much so that his praises were raised to the skies. His name is raised in every place, the young and the old, the weak and the strong. Everyone is loving Ahmad ibn Muhammad. So this Wathik guy goes, <clears throat> Lash is not going to work in this man now. I'll do something new. So he says to him, You, Ahmad. Well, of course, he didn't say direct to him, he sent the soldiers. Go tell him, he is not allowed to have lessons on these lands. Go tell him, he is not allowed to meet the people. Go tell him, he is not allowed to allow to bring the people in his house. And they stayed like this for five years. Little more than five years. <coughs> for five years, this illustrious great Imam, he now prays in the house, hiding, because he's not allowed to go outside. He's not allowed to go inside, to go outside. He's not allowed to go see the people. He's not allowed for the people to come to him. And then after five years, Imam Ahmad prayed in his home for five years and this trial increased in celebrity. This trial only, this trial only increased in his celebrity, in prestige and raised his status in the hearts of those who loved him and made him a symbol of courage, steadfastness and fortitude in the face of injury and offense. Abu Zurra said, the people spoke more highly of him than of Yahya ibn Ma'in and Abu Khaythama. But they praised him even more after he had been put to trials. His praises were sung to the skies. <clears throat> Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, he then wrote, after the, he was suffering so much from these pains and these agonies, as soon as he arrived home, the people came and they were testing his wounds and they were putting in, Allah, he did the thing that they put it in his skin, they said there was no end. These holes and these wounds in his body, there was no end. If you, if you take a long metal and you push it in, there's no end, subhanAllah. And his 
to Imam Ahmed and Muhammad is like Qadrullah. Like I said, he, he said he doesn't even he doesn't even realize these were big holes there. And they treated him and they treated him and they continuously treated him. And he Imam Ahmed Muhammad, even to the day he died, his traces of marks and lashes and sores and wounds, everything remained visible upon him. His necks, the people said, when we see him praying, you will see hundreds of strikes on his necks. On his neck strikes, the, the brands, the marks, and everything is remaining there. Imam Ahmad al Muhammad, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he wrote a will. And in this will, he says to give so and so a hundred dinar. He mentioned the name of the man. <coughs> and then he said, I have a few more dinar for so and so person. And he said, Give it to him. And then he says, then give every single male and female from my household 10 dinars each. Can you imagine the amount of money? Few dirham he died and left. He died and left only a few dirham. 10 dirham each for each kid. When he died, he only had a young son who was born 50 days before, <coughs> Saeed. Because he started his life at the age of 40. So he got married at the age of 40 and he started doing his lessons at the age of 40. Before then, he was memorizing the deen, understanding fiqh, aqidah, understanding Islamic jurisprudence, poetry, adab, understanding lughat al arabiya hadith of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, writing the, the names of the, of the companions, his musnad is. He's an amazing Muslim, subhanAllah. He gathered so much ahadith and he left the ilm. وَإِنَّ الْعُلَمَاء وَرَثَةُ الْأَنْبِيَاء The scholars are the heirs of the prophets. These scholars مَا تَرَكُوا دِينَارًا وَلَا دِرْهَمًا The Anbiya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala They do not leave dirham and dinar وَلَكِنْ تَرَكُوا الْعِلْم Instead, these prophets would leave knowledge for the people. وَإِنَّ الْعُلَمَاء وَرَثَةُ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ And verily, the scholars are the heirs, the inheritors of the knowledge, the drink. They would take from the, the, the wisdom and the knowledge of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by the companions and the Tabi'oon. In his Musnad, he mentioned narrations of the Tabi'oon, narrations of the Tabi'oon, Tabi'een. Narrations from Abu Huraira, narrations from so and so, he mentioned them according to the names. He did not. He mentioned these, the, his, his tartib, the way he organized his book. It was like he put the hadith of Abu Huraira, he mentions the whole lot. And then he put the hadith of Ibn Mas'ud, and he mentions the whole lot. And then he put the, 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 the chapters of uh, the hadith of his, of his Mashaykh, and he mentions the whole lot. A unique book in his own style. Imam Ahmad al Muhammad, life is full of everything, subhanAllah. Because why? He was studious, God fearing, humble, polite. He was looking for knowledge. He loved Sunnah. He hated the people who destroyed the Sunnah. He spoke against Jahmiyyah, Mu'tazila. Shia, Rafida. He hates them so much. He never used to go pray the janazah. He does not give them salam. He does not visit them. Age of 40, he got married. He got loads of children. He got another wife. Another children. Not a child. Another wife. Some more kids. Making children. Increasing the ummah. Increasing the omas of the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was very simple. He wore the most simple clothing. He was one who is God fearing. He bare his torture and punishment. He never gave up on this kalam of khalqullah. He did not say that the Quran is created, but he kept to his kalam. That the kalam is ghayru makhluk. The kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not created. So his life is full of talab al-ilm, 
you can take from